The Wally Show podcast is our daily radio show heard live through the Way FM app each morning and hosted by Wally, Gavin, and me, Betty Rock. For more fun, be sure to connect with us at wayfm.com slash Wally. The Wally Show podcast is brought to you by Colorado Christian University Online, where Wally teaches and where you can earn a degree online just like Betty Rock. You can learn more at ccu.edu slash Wally. This podcast is also brought to you by United Faith Mortgage. Let their direct lender advise Advantage, save you time and money. Uplifting Way FM. News can be a little heavy, so we like to do news ish. Here's Betty. I've caught myself a few times. I'm getting nervous on if the lady at the checkout counter is judging me for my purchases. Take, for instance, like when I go up there with only cookie dough ice cream and a bag of cat treats. Yeah, she looks at you like, you okay, honey? And it's Friday night. (laughs) (laughs) But it turns out my worries are warranted, especially, too, if you're feeling the same way. There's a thread online of cashiers talking about times they've judged customers in the Mm. past. And so I full I uh, pulled a few of the highlights. I have s- always wondered about this myself, like because I get like super weirdly, oddly affected by this. I do, yeah, and I don't know why. You know what's? W- there was one instance that was very weird when you said it and you were telling it to me. I was like, oh, that's odd. You were in the drive-through and you were worried that the person behind you thought you were the one that was holding yes, up the line. Yes. So you would actually like hold your card and tap it on the out side. the window to let them know <laughs> this ain't a me it's problem. <laughs> Yeah, I do. I do get weirded out about stuff like that. So what's on the list? Okay, so here's what I found out. Um, If you're at a gas station or Walmart, Walgreens, whatever, and you buy expensive premium bottled water, chances are they're judging you. That cashier is judging you because... What, like what's there's no difference between the it's high the premium. Same. It's all the same. It's just water. Another one is bringing your kid to an R-rated movie. Yes, I've seen that, and I always and I I'll be honest. I judge your parenting. Like I'm like seriously, are you bringing your kid to that? Yeah, and it turns out you're not alone because other like movie ticketing cashier people yeah. are going to be judging you. So think about that the next time. I can see that. And then this is something you need to worry about, Wally. A McDonald's worker claims that she judges any. Kind Customer that comes through the drive-thru ordering coffee with 10 or more sugars <laughs> or creams. Oh, absolutely. Trust me, this is why uh, whenever we do coffee on the show, we have Gavin go do it because I can't handle the judgment every day for my coffee order. You actually tried it by yourself one time. And yeah. You're like, I'm going to be a man. I'm yeah. going to do it. And then you get through the line. You're like, um, actually, this is for my wife. I it's did. not for me. <laughs> yeah. And the guy was like, oh, yeah, I could tell this was a woman's drink. Like, oh. <laughs> so, yeah. So I know they're judging you. They're judging you. So you're not crazy if you feel that. Uplifting, Way FM. This is The Wally Show. We're going to do a little one-word weekend right now where you give us one word to describe your weekend. And we'll kind of uh, like make some theories or hypotheses as to what happened. Uh, mine uh, one-word weekend is kidney. Uh, oh, no. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Okay, I know you have kidney stone yeah, issues. I do. So I'm thinking that, unfortunately, over the weekend, you had another kidney stone situation. I did. (gasps) I did. So bad. Mm. I had weekend plans. Like, I was going to do stuff, and we were out for half a day on Saturday, and we were out to lunch, and, and, like, a kidney stone will make you, like, want to throw up. Uh, And so, like, I was with my wife, and I'm like, I think we're going to need to go home. We need to go home. So we go home. I am doubled over in oh. pain. She's like, do you need to go to the hospital? I'm like, no, I know what this is. And so I'm just kind of dealing with it. All night long through Saturday into oh. Sunday, I had a brief thing where I felt a little better middle of the day of Sunday. And so I mowed the lawn because I had to get that done. What? Yeah, I know. I had to. That was worse. And then kind of hit again. And I was like, you guys almost got a three-day weekend. Uh, oh. But it chilled out late Sunday night. Did Bummer. you <laughs> Thank you, Bummer. No, for you. For you. <laughs> no, that was so you had to come to work today. <laughs> did no. You, oh, you did? No. So I'm in for more. Like, it's just like, oh. oh gosh, that's terrible. At any yeah. moment right now, yeah. we could go back to that. Yeah. Three-day weekend still possible. And, and, yeah. Yes. <laughs> there you go. There's the bright side, Gavin. All right. 855-33-WAY-FM. Maybe we'll help you find the bright side in your bad weekend. 855-33-WAY-FM. Just give us one word. That sums up your weekend, and we'll try to guess what happened. Uh, we'll do that right now. 855-33-WAY-FM with one word weekend on The Wally Show. What do you got? 
Blessed. Oh, that could be a variety of things. Blessed. I am going to say that you were going through some pockets of an old pair of pants and you found $20 you did not know you had and you felt blessed because there's something great about little found money, little treats like that. Am I right? No. Not, okay. Is it better or worse than that? <laughs> it's better. Oh, okay. Betty Rock, you're going to up okay. the bar. Okay. So, Sarah, you found yourself out and about with friends and you took the chance on these pair of pants that you hadn't worn in a while, but you were like, you know, I love these and I feel like I could really, you know, own it. Uh, you get out and you dropped something out of your purse you bend down to get it and you thought you ripped your pants mm. turns out you didn't oh. and you said whoo i'm blessed <laughs> is that nope, it nope it's better than that better than that i boy your weekend was amazing <laughs> i guess so uh what is what could be better than that sarah me and my new husband have started looking for a house well that's fantastic especially in this economy it's a big deal have you found anything yet? Like, you're like, ooh, this looks like it could be our house. We've put two offers down, but they haven't gone through yet. That just means it wasn't God's plan, and we're going to keep looking. Yeah, that's the thing, man. It's a real competitive market still, and it is hard to get a house. But, boy, when you get one, it feels like winning the lottery. Like, And you almost are like, yeah, this was the one. You really feel like this was supposed to be the one we're uh, going to die in. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, no, I mean, not that sounds pessimistic, but I mean, it's, it's optimistic that you're going to have such a long happy life in the okay. zone. Okay. <laughs> There's like, I was blessed. <laughs> well, good luck with the house hunt, Sarah. Thanks. Y'all have a blessed day. What do you got? Tattoo. Tattoo. Uh, on the surface, I think, is obviously a tattoo, but that's what an amateur would think. This mm-hmm. is way mm-hmm. deeper than that. It's yeah. not actually a tattoo. She watched a marathon of Fantasy Island, uh, and the uh, sidekick <laughs> on Fantasy Island, the original, his name was Tattoo. And so I think oh. that she watched that show. Am I correct? No. Mm. I think you and your husband had a bet, and the loser had to get a tattoo. A face tattoo. A, face ta- <laughs> a neck tattoo. Oh. Based off of what the other person chose for them, you unfortunately were on the losing end, and he chose for you a unicorn on the side of your neck. No. Nope. <laughs> well, it's going to be hard to be better than that. So uh, what did you do? So me and my two sisters and my mom, we all got flowers that represent our birth month, and we all got them tattooed this weekend together. Wow. And your yeah. mom going and getting a tattoo. That's not what you hear often. How old is she? Um, she's in her 50s, and it was her first one, and she definitely said it was her first and last and only tattoo. Yeah, I get that. I get that. My daughter is all excited because when we go back down to see her, she and I are getting the same tattoo, and uh, I'm getting it on my arm, and she's getting it on her ribs, and we want my wife, you know, her mom, to get it as well, and Marty had hinted that she might. But then I think she's already trying to back out, like getting it like a small one on her wrist. And it's something that we always say to each other. Yeah. Uh, we always say mahu mahu. And, just get, oh, that's what? cool. Yeah, like Marty just needs to buckle down I and know. do it. I know. It's like you had a baby. Don't worry about the pain. It's, yeah, it's you've been through worse. You've been married to me for this long. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, I'll pray for your daughter because on the ribs, my sister got it there and she cried the whole time through it. <laughs> Uh, I think my daughter might be a sociopath because, uh, like, she got one on her ribs and didn't move, didn't cry, nothing. Psycho. Oh, man. What do you got? Depression. Depression. Now, I could take this as really serious or depression that, like, you had an ice cream scoop and dropped it. Where are we at? Serious. Ah, okay. I'm sorry to hear that. So, what was going on with you this weekend? Basically, I struggle with suicidal ideation. What is ideation? It's where you're not going to do it, but you think about it? Yes. Okay, I actually understand that. It, it's a real struggle. What is something that you think kind of triggers this for you? Do you know the triggers yet? I know a couple of them. Um, I'm a caretaker. Okay, so how does that play into it? Uh, watching my mom decline. Oh, man. That's the major one. There is nothing harder than that. Being a caregiver to somebody when they're, you know, coming down to the end of their life, it is so hard and it can be super depressing. And that's why you have to, you feel guilty about taking time away, but you have to take time away for self-care. I watched my wife taking care of her dad and she became a completely different person and so not like herself because it just consumed her. And it's like, you have to take moments 
to breathe and and work on you and be and make sure you're okay so that you can be better for them you know yeah we did the same thing with my dad so it's not new to me it's just kind of going through it all over again. Yeah, you're just back in and it brings all of it back too. That's I'm so yeah. sorry. That is not easy. Thank you. Well, when it gets too much, just remember this phone call and you, you know, we're brave enough to come and talk about it and then just go get a coffee or something just to get out of it for a minute, recenter and then come back. Yeah, I literally just got back from getting a coffee. <laughs> Oh, good. Okay. You're like, you know what? I'm going to have to go get another round. I might have to. Oh, Tiffany, I'm sorry that you're dealing with that, but I I, I hope that uh, you'll find some peace in the middle of that because there can be peace, even though it doesn't feel like it. Thank you for talking to me. Hey, no worries. We're always here. All right. Have a good day. Coffee shops, poolside, back porch, picnic table at the park, at your kid's soccer practice. Just about anywhere can be your classroom when you decide to go back to school online at Colorado Christian University. I know I got my degree online and I actually did a homework at a campsite. I was uh, sitting around a campfire writing a paper. That is where I did some of my work that weekend. So life doesn't have to stop just because you go back to school to better yourself. You can work towards this future and this goal that you want to accomplish, and it doesn't have to totally consume you or derail your normal life with friends, your family, or what have you. And you can earn accredited degrees from Colorado Christian without ever setting foot on campus. So there really shouldn't be an excuse to not going back to school. If it's something you really want to do, you can do it. And all you have to do is go to ccu.edu slash Wally to learn more. And the other really important thing is that Colorado Christian is committed to cultivating the mind without compromising the heart. So check it out, ccu.edu slash Wally. Uplifting Way FM. If you're not careful, you might just learn something today. Hi there. Is there a project you're working on? I know more than you. All right. It's the Wally Show. We would all like to have a little bit more money in the bank, I'm sure. And there are a bunch of financial advisors who give you advice. And it's all pretty much the same. Cut or reduce unnecessary costs. Don't overspend on things uh, that you buy all the time, like food. And if you want to increase cash flow, uh, you know, get a raise or get a side hustle. You know, like, okay, I get get all of that. Uh, This one lady, though, who I read this article from. She talked about the importance of a side hustle instead of asking for a raise because it helps you build confidence in your ability to make money because there's Hmm. something that feels good about that. You're like, oh, I went out and I got this job and I earned this money. It does feel good. We we were wired to work. At one point, I mean, I do get that, but at one point I had a full-time job and a part-time job to pay for rent on my own. Yeah. It was a lot. Uh, Yeah, it is a lot. But and you, I, I didn't feel like self gratification or anything. I was just like worn out all the time, felt and tired. I had no social life. <laughs> well, that's it. You got to make choices for sure, and you chose uh, differently. Uh, and so, one of the other this might line up with that a little bit more is one of the other things that she does that a lot of financial people don't do is she said set aside a joy fund. It's like a special account with a small sum that's meant to be spent on things that just bring you joy. Uh, Because when you're trying to get out of debt, you obviously are putting a bunch of money towards Mm -hmm. your debt. Her whole take is don't, uh, you know, overlook small things that can bring you happiness in the middle of that. I like that yeah. because I have found that there are certain personality types that they find that hard to buy things for themselves. Right. And so to have this little amount of money put to the side, it kind of gives you that permission to do so. And she could buy things and make it guilt free. Now, her right. percentages, I thought were a little crazy. She's like 50 percent towards all of your uh, you know, needs, your rent, your utilities, food, 30 percent towards your joy fund. Like, hey. wait, yeah, that's a yeah, little yeah. much. And 20 percent towards savings. Uh, I would alter those a little bit more. You would do 50 in joy and 20 yeah, in savings. Yeah, 100% enjoy. 30. Yes. <laughs> uh, no, like, like, because then if you're trying to get out of debt, like if you got a lot of debt or whatever, or you're trying to get somewhere with it, I'd do, you know, 50 to all your stuff and 10% in joy and like 40% towards your savings and that stuff. That doesn't bring me joy. Well, I know it doesn't bring you a lot of joy, but getting out of <laughs> debt will bring you joy. Uh, Dave Ramsey, he's a, a big Christian financial guy too. Uh, he uh, stresses having an emergency fund and also... So uh, he puts giving at the top of your list. Like when you're cutting out things, he's like, don't cut out your giving. Make that one of your first things you do because that actually does bring you joy. And Mm -hmm. it helps you 
focus on what in, is important and tithing and things like that. I always thought, oh, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, it, it's funny because there's this bit. I don't have time for it. We'll come back to it in a second. Uh, there's a uh, bit from SNL that actually uh, explains how you should save your money. And, and you could save money on not going with financial people if you just followed SNL's advice. We'll do that here <laughs> in 10 on the Wally Show. Way FM. This is the Wally Show, and we're talking about like saving money. And uh, different financial people always have advice: is like cut out your spending and put money towards a rainy day fund. And this other lady was like, "Have a joy fund, uh, something that makes you happy, you know." But you don't have to put a lot of money towards that. But as you're trying to save money, giving yourself little splurges can actually help you enjoy the time versus lamenting it and make you more successful at it. But when you get down to it. At the basic level of all these people advising you about how to save your money, it's all the same advice, and it's super simple. And that's what SNL, uh, Saturday Night Live, tapped into a, a while back. And I'm like, yeah, you can call Dave Ramsey. You can call you know all these other financial people. But at the end of the day, this is what they're telling you. Did you know millions of Americans live with debt they cannot control? That's why I developed this unique new program for managing your debt. It's called Don't Buy Stuff You Cannot Afford. <laughs> oh, let me see that. If you don't have any money, you should not buy anything. Hmm, sounds interesting. Sounds confusing. Okay, well, what if I want something but I don't have any money? You don't buy it. Well, let's say I don't have enough money to buy something. Should I buy it anyway? <laughs> no. <laughs> now I'm really confused. <laughs> it's a little confusing at first. Well, what if you have the money? Can you buy something? Yes. Now take the money away. <laughs> Same story? Nope. You shouldn't buy stuff when you don't have the money. But shouldn't you buy it before you have the money? <laughs> no. Why not? It's in the book. It's only one page long. <laughs> The advice is priceless, and the book is free. Wow, I like the sound of that. Yeah, we can put it on our credit card. <laughs> Monday School is a chance for Wally to share what he learned at church and prove that he went. So we were kicking off a big sermon series on the fruits of the Spirit. And uh, we started off with this kind of analogy of how do you know an apple tree is an apple tree? because of the fruit. You know, without the fruit, it looks like just any old tree. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's so insightful. It makes so much sense now. Yeah, mind blown. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so the, you know, practical application of that for us is how do people know we are Christians? By the fruit, you know, that we bear fruit. You know, the mm -hmm. evidence of our faith should be all over us and make it quickly obvious to people that look at us that we're believers by how we interact with people, how we treat people. And I can even see this in the people that I hang out with, like those people that I know that they take time out of every day to take time to read the Bible or sure. do their devotions and stuff compared to the friends that I have that I know for sure don't do that. Where do we yeah. fall? Yeah, why are you that? looking at me? I'm, yeah. not, I'm not making any judgments because I'm not one to judge. Yeah, it's all judgy. up to the Lord. I'm just saying mirror. that you can't. I'm just <laughs> saying that you can see a difference in people's character. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they don't throw stones at you. <laughs> well, living a life of love uh, demonstrates our relationship with Jesus. If we're not capable of loving people and, and loving people who are difficult or people that are different from us, I think it speaks a lot to our personal relationship with God. Like if we have hatred in our heart, how can we say that we truly love God? The Bible talks about that. You know, you yeah. can't, they can't serve two masters. Yeah. There was something like even, even those who are evil know that to, how to love the ones that they love, but right. to love someone that's actually difficult is is difficult. <laughs> and the Bible says that uh, people will know that we are followers of Christ because our love for one another, you know, and at the end of our lives, people will remember how well we love people or how bad we were at it. Ooh. That's it's kind of like how they sum up your life, you know, like, were you good to people or were you not good to people? Mm -hmm. You know, when all is said and done. And so love is an action. It takes intention. And when we get it right, it's life changing. And so there you go. That's your Monday school for today. Stop looking at me, Rock. I didn't say anything. <laughs> Uplifting Way FM. This is the Wally Show. And we're going to do a little best worst joke right now. This chance for you to win a prize. But you have a job to do to actually win this 
We're going to tell each other a joke, and you're going to decide which is the best worst joke. That's job number one. Um, and if we steal each other's punchline, then that joke will be out of the running for best worst joke. But now here's where the real work happens. You then have to tell us a joke. All right? And it can be a groaner. That's fine. We understand it. It's best worst joke. But if we cannot steal your punchline, if the three comedic minds here cannot figure it out, then you will win a prize. Okay? So that's what we're doing. That's how we do it. Let's start with you, Lady Rock, today. I always start. No, you don't. You yes, always I say do. that. I usually start with Gavin now. Let's go with you. Come on. Bring it. Did you hear the rumor going around about the butter? How do you sound so disappointed? Yeah. No, I... Let I, it no, I didn't roll. Away. I don't know. You got Never cream. mind. I shouldn't spread it. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. uh, okay, not bad. Got what? It. Get Gavin? spread it. Spread. It's like spread <laughs> like butter. Got it. Okay. How many bugs do you need to rent out an apartment? Litter bugs, bed bugs. I don't know. Ten ants. Ten ants. <laughs> Ten ants. He was so proud of himself on the delivery. Ten ants. I wish you could see his face. He, he just lit up. He glowed. He's I like, that's going to be great. Ten ants. No, that is really good. I got stuck on this uh, TikTok trend of cow jokes uh, recently. <laughs> and so, yeah. Uh, how do you count cows? Oh, One. man. No. no. You right. use a calculator. Oh. <laughs> Calculator. Oh. That's like first grade level. Yeah. Really? Oh, that was, no. yeah, that's pretty big coming from a kindergarten joke. <laughs> <laughs> all right. 855 33 Way FM. So the good news is all three jokes are in contention for the best worst joke. You just decide which one it is. And then again, tell us a joke. And we didn't get anybody's. We didn't steal a single punchline today. So maybe that bodes well for you. We're not thinking comedically. 855 33 Way FM. Because if we cannot steal your punchline of your joke, you're going to win a prize. 855 855- 33 Way FM if you want to play Best Worst Joke now. Uplifting Way FM. This is the Wally Show. Lisa, welcome to Best Worst Joke. I hope you brought your funny bone with you. Because <laughs> we need it. Okay, so uh, we're going to tell you the jokes again, and you decide who had the best worst joke. Gavin, we'll start with you. How many bugs do you need to rent out an apartment? Ten ants. He's still so happy about that. <laughs> ten ants, ten ants. Uh, Betty Rock? Mine's from Jessica. You heard the rumor going around about the butter? Never mind. I shouldn't spread it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and mine is, how do you count cows? Obviously, you use a calculator. Oh. Uh, so, Lisa, who has the best worst joke? Um, I think it was you. Oh, me? Well, look yep. at that. The calculator joke resonated really? with Lisa. That one was the yeah. lamest. They always hate it when I win things. So, uh, so, okay, now here, speaking of winning things, you tell us a joke. If we cannot steal your punchline, you're going to win a prize. Okay. How do you catch a unique rabbit? How do you catch a unique rabbit? Uh-huh. Hair. Yeah, I, hop. Mm, I, I don't know. You make up. You need <laughs> up on it. That's she good. had the same uh, joy in her joke that Gavin did with his ten ants. Well uh, done. So nicely done. That was really good. Oh, wow. You got us all, Lisa. That means you're a winner today on Best Worst Joke. Hey. Fine print drives me nuts. I'm always like, what are they trying to hide? Hey, it's Wally. And I was actually talking about this with Betty and Gavin on our podcast the other day. Have you ever read any of the fine print on anything? No. 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 And they know that. That's why it's important to trust the people that you do business with. Like, I closed on my refinance with United Faith Mortgage. Love those guys. And I read mm, about nothing. Uh, you know, <laughs> like, but, but I trust trusting. them. That's exactly yeah. it. Like, I trust them. And that's what's so important. This lady that they sent to the house is great. This is what this is. This is what this is. And you're like, all right, just let me sign. Let's do this. <laughs> sign my life away. Oh, yeah. And so, I just gave away my child. Yeah. My bad. Well, that's okay. <laughs> Joke's on oh, them. Uh, she's going to cost them a whole whole lot. (laughs) So if you need a loan or you want to refinance your home, do yourself a favor and talk to United Faith Mortgage. They are faith-based and they do not play the fine print game. United Faith Mortgage. Start online. Call anytime. UnitedFaithMortgage.com. United Faith Mortgage is a DBA of United Mortgage Corp. 25 Middle Park Road, Melbourne, New York. Licensed mortgage banker. For all licensing information, go to Animalist Consumer Access. Or corporate Animalist number 1330. Equal housing lender. I license in Alaska, Hawaii, Georgia, Massachusetts, North Dakota, South Dakota, or Utah. Uplifting Way FM. If you're not careful, you might just learn something today. Hi there. Is there a project you're working on? I know more than you. All right. It's the Wally Show. All right, Gavin, what you got? Fitness is a word that some people get very excited about hearing. And for other people, I think it's a very horrifying idea to 
dive into because you were talking about balancing your calories and eating mm-hmm. the right food and working out and doing all this stuff where you're like, I don't have time or the drive to do any of that stuff in the day. The drive, that's the big one. Yeah. <laughs> we mo- Most of us have the time, but the drive is the big issue. Yeah. And one thing that uh, has been a very simple thing that's been taking the health world by storm, and especially this office, is the simple act of, of walking, of oh. getting your steps in. It is absolutely huge in this office. Not these. this room. No. <laughs> Three of us, not so no. much. But this office, we've got our boss saying that he gets... 20,000 yeah. steps a day? It's crazy. Like, because they've incentivized it. So, like, if you hit all the goals on your fitness tracker, you get like $3 for the day towards your insurance. So, I mean, it adds up. My wife does it for us. I obviously don't. <laughs> uh, but, like, how many times have I been like, oh, man, I need to talk to Steve. Where's Steve? He's on a walk. Boo! I actually had to go take a walk the other day to get a question answered. Oh, my God. Yeah, almost killed me. <laughs> <laughs> and walking is like a very normal thing. But, yeah, like, to get to those amount of steps, it takes a lot of time yeah. but one thing i read that apparently uh that is interesting in a study shows that apparently when you wear a simple like fitness tracker whether it's like an apple watch or one of those fitbits or something it actually encourages you to walk at least 40 more minutes a day okay so if you have one of the ways to calculate it they, they're saying that you walk more yes. like just naturally you tend to walk more I could see that my wife does them and she has like the frequency walks and it tells her when she needs to do it and she does it all like throughout the day and like she'll like literally like sometimes it'll run to the end of the day and she'll be like getting ready for bed and she'll be like oh I got I got one more walk to do and she'll wait for it and then it clicks over and she does her walk around the house <laughs> wow yeah she's all in but without that fitness tracker she'd be like yeah let's just call it a day I could see though something that's keeping you um, accountable sure. and telling you, "Hey, this is it's a, it's kind of like a schedule. It's almost like we're being dogs, like being told yes. when to go and all this stuff." I, I could see where that would work for me. Oh yeah. Wait a minute, I did have a Fitbit. Yeah, mm-hmm. you probably lost it. Well, I just got tired of charging it. I, was like, nah, <laughs> yeah. She's like, I don't like anything telling me what to do. I'm not doing this. <laughs> Behold, God stuff. Uplifting, Way FM, this is the Wally Show, and there's a Major League Baseball pitcher named Luke Weaver, and he played for the Diamondbacks, and he just got traded to the Royals, uh, but Luke is a believer, and he's known for his Bible glove. It was a glove created with a company where there's a cross above the finger hole, there's three Bible verses imprinted on it, and it's just kind of a way that he demonstrates his faith in the middle of playing a game. And I think that's pretty awesome because, I mean, there are a lot of athletes out there that maybe they have the same faith, but they don't sure. take that stand. But that's just a unique way of showing what you believe. It keeps you accountable, too. If that's on your hand or in the middle of the game ah. and you uh, have a tendency to be, like, uber competitive or maybe uh, <laughs> not be nice, mm-hmm. it would definitely be like, okay, let's keep things in balance <laughs> here. Uh, some of the Bible verses he has on there, of course, Matthew nineteen twenty six, 26, uh, which is... Which, Which is, is what? Oh, you want me to say it? Mm-hmm. Oh, I know it. It's uh, with man, this is possible. Don't look at that paper. But with God, look, all look things up, are possible. Up. I'll give you one. This one you'll know. Uh, Philippians 4.13. Which is? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Strength. Strength. You were looking at the No, no, that one, no, no that one I know. No, that one I know. And then 1 Corinthians 16.13. Look up. Be on your guard. Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta look. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, wait, yeah, wait, yeah, wait. Yeah, Stand yeah. firm in the faith and be courageous. Ooh, uh, be strong. That's what it was. I'd forgotten that. <laughs> Maybe you need a couple of Bible verses printed up on your hand. Well, it's funny you mention that <laughs> because I am curious about, like, this is his way that he demonstrates his faith. And, you know, I'm curious have you placed a Bible verse anywhere? Like you've written it, maybe you have one on your car. I don't know. I, that's dangerous because we tend to all not be the best versions of ourselves when we oh, drive. Oh, that's true. <laughs> uh, you know, so like maybe you put a Bible verse on your car. That just that, that place you display a Bible verse, you put it on something. Maybe it's on your your phone case. I don't know. I'm just curious if like this picture, you have a Bible verse somewhere to remind you of you know God's promises, His goodness, or is it kind of that? outreach thing you want people to ask you about you know kind of thing kind of like this picture so 855-33-WAY-FM that's how you can be on the show we love having you on Uh, that's your ticket if you will 855-33-WAY-FM and love to hear your story about the thing that you have a bible verse on have you ever done that Jesse have you ever kind of displayed a bible verse somewhere well not actually a bible verse but I have a tattoo on my forearm that's pretty large. It says, he knows my name. Oh, well, that's cool. Do people ask you about your tattoo and then you get to explain to them what it means? 
Uh huh. Yes, I explained to him my battle with brain cancer, and that that was my reminder that he has a plan for me and not to worry. I love it. That's a great one, Jesse. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too. Bye bye. All right, Ron, you're up. Do you have that Bible verse or that Christian thing somewhere that people can see it? My pickup and my wife's suburban both have stickers on the doors that say. Jesus Christ died to save sinners. I would imagine, though, that if you have that on your car, that that would maybe keep you responsible if you're feeling a little bit angry. It slows down the road rage for sure. Yeah. Although, I, when I, if I'm behind you and I read that, I think you're calling me a sinner. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, because of the way I drive. I, I have been known to yell out the window. Yes, that includes me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rod, thanks for being on with us, buddy. All right. Thank you. So have you ever done that, Jennifer, like put Bible verses anywhere? I absolutely have. I've got three on my dashboard right now. Oh, okay. Well, what do they say? Um, Psalms 56.3. When I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. Is that when someone else is driving? <laughs> well, they're actually by my gauge, so I can glance down and look back up, but I usually look at them when I'm at a stop sign. So why did you start doing this? My cousin and I are around a lot of people every day. She's a physical therapist, and she gets bombarded with a lot of negativity from co-workers and things. So she talked to me one day, and she's like, look, let's start learning a new Bible verse every week. And I said, that's a great idea. And she's like, we got to start with short ones, though. John 11, 35, <laughs> Jesus wept. Put it on there. Well, I got that. That's the second one. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great idea, man, to just ground yourself in the Word daily because there are a lot of things that come at you and to be reminded of who you are, whose you are, and that uh, there can be peace and chaos is a great thing. How fast are you going right now, by the way? 65. Okay, in a 35 probably. <laughs> I'm late for work. Zoom in past the school. <laughs> Kids. <laughs> <laughs> Love Jesus, everybody! <laughs> These are the least important stories out of Hollywood, but nonetheless entertaining. Here's Betty Rock with the least of these. I'm sure we've all caught ourselves daydreaming about if we were stars and we got that first big paycheck, mm. what would we buy? Oh, absolutely. What would you buy? Uh, I'd probably buy, how big a paycheck? Because I'm thinking yeah. island. Like you just, start, <laughs> you just start in your first movie. Oh, like, okay, after I can only imagine. No, uh, no star. Because I didn't not make, make that a kind of guest money. One uh, second appearance. Um, yeah, I would, I would probably, I, mm, I would buy. Buy a, a lake house, mm. like that would be my splurge, mm. like a, an escape, a retreat Ooh. with with a lake. I like that. What about you? Well, a VW van. Oh, yeah, that's easy. so you. Camper. Easy. So you. Yeah. Well, um, it turns out that there is a list put together of celebrities and what they have bought oh. with their first big paycheck. So here's what I found out: actor Donald Glover. Oh yeah. He, as a child, he was not allowed to buy candy. So his first paycheck, he bought a bunch of gushers. You know those little like, gummy. <laughs> yeah, they, they they put the liquid that explodes in them. Yeah, that's great. That's what he bought. Nicole Kidman, she bought what she called quote the coolest boots I have ever seen in my entire life. Okay, good for her. Yeah, she wouldn't have splurged on them otherwise. Well, she also got a washing machine for her parents. Oh, so nice. So she thought of others. Nice. And then Tom Cruise. What can the guy do wrong? What did he Nothing. buy? He gave it to charity. I Platform bet. shoes? <laughs> he gave it to charity. I hate him. <laughs> he bought his sister's college tuition. Oh, that's nice. So that's paid nice. for the whole thing. Yeah, that's good. I would do that too, but I mean. <laughs> you did mention it. Plus, you. I think you have more than one sister, right? Yeah, yeah. They, they, would you get them all something? They're all smarter than me. They all got scholarships. They were fine. Like, I wouldn't need it. They so how are you going to justify it? You know what? Fine. You come study at the lake house. You'll feel better. <laughs> <laughs> Uplifting, Way FM. This is the Wally Show. And from time to time, you come across something. You're like, I cannot believe I did not know this. Uh, as an adult, as an adult human being, like, how did I not know this? I just found this out. And so that's what I want to talk about right now with you. And, and I guarantee you, anyone that's listening to this right now, if they are not driving, will try this. Okay? I just found out. That if you double knot your shoes, you've tied them, and then you double knot them, because I do this all the time with my riding shoes, you can just pull the two strings and the whole thing will come apart. I mean, it seems like, I don't, Rock, I see your face. You look bewildered, like there's no way that's possible. Wait. It, the, and now, now she wants to do but it. But when it's double knotted, you pull the double two strings? Double knotted. Just put the, take the two loops, oh, wait. double knot them, put them against each other, you know, do the loop them together. 
Wait. And then pull the two strings. It'd be really funny if I was lying it and you just work. knotted it. I did it the other day and it worked. It just made it the knot tighter. What? That's weird. Okay, left foot. <laughs> well, she's making us do stuff. No, I'm not. I really, I legit did this. Well, then you need to Here, do let it. Let me pull this... it hard. Let me pull it hard. No, you're going <laughs> to. Pull it really tight, Gavin. Oh! Did it work? I just did that. See, I'm telling wait, you. Wait, wait. No. See, it does work. It doesn't seem like it should, and it's the whole purpose of a double knot. It's just been undone. Oh. See? I have been, I, my whole 37 years, yeah, I've been un, like trying to un, untie. Do untie double knots. Yeah. You just have to pull hard. Yeah. What? And you think, like, you try to wow. untie those double knots, and it's so hard. You just pull the two strings. It undoes it. I guarantee you, I'm telling you, anyone that's listening, if they have lace-up shoes right now is trying this. Absolutely. That is pretty awesome. See? I, that's what I thought, too. I just found that Where'd out. Where'd you learn that? Uh, uh, a From friend a of mine. From a four-year-old? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, some guy I know. All right, so here's the deal. 855 855- 33 way fm is the number that's 855 33 way fm what is that thing that you just found out like you're like i did like yesterday i just found out such and such yeah you just found out as an adult right exactly because exactly. it's something that you're like i've done this wrong all my life yeah like i can't believe that yeah 855 <laughs> 33 way fm what did you just find out and we'll just be as amazed as we were about the shoe tying thing i'm sure and who knows you might teach us something that we didn't didn't even know. There you go. All right, let's do it up. 855-33-WAY-FM. So, Lisa, what is that thing you just found out as an adult? Okay, I'm 56, and I just found out that the little picture of the guest that's on in your dashboard, there's an arrow there, or the picture that looks like a guest filler, that shows the side that your tank is on. That was a game changer that I only learned a couple years ago that I did not okay. know that either. So, like, say you rent a car and you're never sure what side the gas tank is on. If you look at that little uh, gas pump on your dashboard, the arrow tells you which side uh, to uh, pull into, which is so smart. Never knew it. Lisa, I'm picturing you, like, before you knew this, that you were just <laughs> pulling into a gas station. You'd be on the wrong side. You'd be looking around, Random. then having to pull around All again. <laughs> Yes. Oh, that was me. <laughs> I need more arrows in my life to show me things, to guide Amen. me and point me directions. Amen. Right? I mean, I have a wife that's pretty good at doing that audibly, uh, but some <laughs> arrows would be nice. It's a little quieter. <laughs> What's yours? <laughs> Blew my mind. You know when you get Chinese takeout food, those little white boxes? Yeah. yeah. You just bend off the metal wire and they unfold out into a plate. No. Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. How'd you find this out? A lot of lonely nights eating takeout. <laughs> so now you need to go out and get Chinese food. Yeah, yeah I'll try it. These are those life hacks that like, you hear and you're like, no, but then you're like, I'm trying this tonight. Yeah, Absolutely. They were designed for that, apparently. <laughs> That's so smart because sometimes you got to dig into the corners and now it's, now it's a plate. I mean, it is it's smart, but they should have let us know about yes, it. Yeah. Maybe some instructions. <laughs> And now, for some good news. Uplifting! Way FM, this here's the Wally Show. A little good news, giddy up. A couple rapid fire good news stories coming at you to make you feel better about your day today because the regular news is a little bit on the heavy side. So, uh, let's start with you, Betty Rock. Good news, giddy up, go. Have you ever experienced that ringing in the ear? I know that I have it occasionally, like uh, once in a blue moon. A lot of uh, DJs get this from head- headphones being so loud for you. You should have it. Yeah. It's a miracle <laughs> Your headphones I don't. are so loud. Well, um, researchers in New Zealand came up with a new smartphone therapy that they say can reduce chronic ten- tinnitus, tinnitus yeah. in three months. Ooh. Oh, that's kind of crazy. So I know that it can drive someone crazy who has tinnitus, but man, having that done in three with the months. phone, that's weird. I've had people, I've known people in this business that had tinnitus and it was just... Dro- drove them crazy. Right. And so, yeah, if they can have a smartphone, it's probably someone just yelling at you on the other end of the phone. <laughs> <laughs> now, you can't hear the ringing, can you? What? Yeah. But if it works, there you go. Uh, good news, giddy up. Gavin, go. There was a woman, uh, her name, her chihuahua, with one of the best names I've ever heard. His name was Goofus. Yeah, that's a, that's a good name. <laughs> he went missing in South Carolina while they were on no, a trip not there. Goofus. And then he ran off into the woods after Goofus. a car crash. No. no one could find him. So his owner, who was from Florida, eventually had to give up, and she went back to her home state of Florida. And then someone who's seen a Facebook post about it got in touch more than a couple weeks later, 
after Goofus, Goofus showed up at their friend's house, and then someone drove him hundreds of miles nice. back to his home in Florida the oh, next day. I like that someone was like, okay, I'll take him. Like, Goofus needs to, he can't walk. It's, it's a, a good long person. Walk. He's a chihuahua. His legs are tiny. <laughs> Nicely done. That is good news. All right. And finally, uh, students from a few different cities got together to create a mosaic uh, in the form of a Ukrainian flag to kind of raise awareness and show solidarity. They did it with 5,000 cereal boxes, and they also might have broken a world record in the process. So that's kind of fun, wow. too. Uh, they uh, made the boxes out of Rice Krispies and Corn Pops because of the yellow and blue. Uh-huh. Cool. And this is what's really cool. The boxes were donated by Kellogg's, and then they re-gifted uh, all of that to the Greater Chicago Food Depository. So, oh, yeah, wow. we went all the way around, and that's why we do a little bit of good news giddy up. Well, that's the end, but it doesn't have to be. Check out our Aftercast. It's new stuff you didn't hear in the podcast. Be sure to rate us on iTunes as well as connect with us on social media. That's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Just search Wally Show. And if you'd like to join our Facebook group made exclusively for you potties, the link is in the description of this podcast. Thanks to Colorado Christian University Online and United Faith Mortgage for supporting what we do. 